Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and we're still working through graph interpretation. Let's take a look. It says the dot plot shows the number of GED subjects passed by the students in a GED class. Approximately what fraction of students have passed three tests? Okay, let's go take a look at this dot plot. As usual on a dot plot, we've got some kind of a number line. And this apparently number line represents the number of tests passed per student. So we have some students who've passed zero tests, one test, two, three, and four. And then each one of these dots or X's in this case represents a single student. So like for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen students, according to this graph, have passed zero tests. I hope that makes sense. Now what are we looking for though? We're looking for approximately, yay, permission to round. What fraction of students have passed three tests? We're looking for the fraction of students who've passed three tests. So when you're doing a fraction, you're treating that number of students like a piece or portion out of the whole, a piece or portion out of the whole. So we should look for the number who've passed three tests. That's our piece or portion. out of the whole. The whole here would be all the students. So the bottom of our fraction would be the total number of students. Now we do have permission to approximate since it says approximately. So um, permission if I have ugly numbers to round them a little bit to make my life easier. Let's take a look. So let's first of all see how many have passed three tests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten students have passed three tests. But they didn't ask me how many students, they asked me what fraction of students. That means I need to compare that piece to the total. So let's do that. Um, I already knew I had 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. About 10 out of 32. Now you're going to look at these numbers. Now I could put 10 out of 32 into my calculator, you know, and reduce it because my calculator will reduce fractions. But something really tricky is going to happen if I do that. Basically, if I put 10 out of 32 in my calculator and press enter to ask it to reduce, it will tell me 5 sixteenths. And I'll be like, oh no, 5 sixteenths is not in this list. So I need to use some approximation skills. So I'm going to do it one way with fractions and one way with decimals. I don't care which way you like it, but let's start with the fraction way. 10 out of 32, all I'm going to do, 10 is already a nice round number, um, and I am going to round 32 uh, to make it something that's divisible by 10. So I'm going to say that's about, I know it's not perfectly exact, but it's about 10 out of 30. Uh, close enough for government work. We had permission to approximate. I'm approximating to make my life easy because 10 out of 30 is both on the 10 times tables. That's really easy to look at. That's just one third. That reduces to one third. And I can see that I'm really close to this number. But what if you hate fractions, you hate reducing, you're super confused by me, you're mad at me right now. You could use your TI to convert all these numbers into decimals. Let's take a look. I'm going to take my original problem, 10 out of 32, and convert it to a decimal by remembering that a fraction bar means the same as divide. So 10 divided by 32 is 0 0.3125. If you just use the divide by button instead of the fraction bar button, your calculator will say, oh, she wants a decimal. Okay, now let's compare that to all these ones down here. So 1 divided by 2 is the decimal 0 0.5, not too close to 0 0.3. 1 divided by 3, on the other hand, will give me 0 0.333, so on and so forth. Pretty close to 0 0.31, 0 0.33, I mean, we are getting close. Whereas 1 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.25, I am pretty far away. 1 divided by 10 is way far away, that's only 0 0.1. And 1 divided by 30 is ridiculous. 0.033, so small. Um, and so 
even if I compared it in a decimal version, um, we could still see that B is closest to uh, this exact answer I would have gotten. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED concept, drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.